Good morning, my friends. So if you guys have been following me and watching me for a while, you will know that I am married to a Colombian. And uh, he's not just from any part of Colombia. He is from Medellin. Yes, he is a paisa. Actually, here in Melbourne, Australia, there is a huge, huge community of Colombians. And so I actually have lots and lots of dear friends who are from Colombia. And uh, I wanted to kind of make this video as a tribute to them because they are some of the loveliest people that you will ever meet in your life. I have actually been to Colombia. I went with my husband in December last year. So I thought it'd be super fun to take you along a full day of eating only Colombian food. So I actually asked my husband, give me your favorite dishes that you remember growing up. He gave me a few, he gave me a few. Getting the ingredients for these was not easy. I went to three different shops to get everything. And uh, it cost me a pretty penny. So please like this video, please share this video because I spent a lot of money on this video. So anyways, I will show you the ingredients that we are working with today. So the recipe did call for skirt steak. I could not find skirt steak and the butcher that I went to was gonna charge me $50 per kilo. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, thank you. So anyways, I just got chalk steak. As you can see, we have tomato paste, we got coriander, spring onions, onions, tomatoes, potatoes, uh, garlic, and this little spice mix right here. Um, we got some cumin, we have this fig thing that's gonna go in the dessert for later. We have some green plantains, we have some ripe plantains, we've got the arepa maize right here, and we got some chicken drummies. Okie dokie, so this first recipe we are actually going to be making at the Cornes. I'm so sorry if I butcher every single one of these pronunciations. I'm trying, okay. 
So traditional petacones are made with plantains and it's basically kind of like a flattened plantain taco. Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. I did actually have them when I was in Bogota. I will actually be keeping it very, very simple and only making one filling because I just, you know, this filling in itself takes about an hour and a half to make. So basically it is called carne desmechada or ropa vieja, which basically means old clothes. So it's like a shredded beef kind of vibe. And so we're going to be putting that in the petacones. So this is where the beef comes in. Like I said, I could not find skirt steak anywhere. So I will be using chuck roast. Um, so I really hope that this works. Anyways, this is a, this is a thick boy. So I will be cutting it down a little bit. So basically it says in a pot, place the steak, water, salt, and pepper cook for about an hour and 15 minutes. Here's the thing about Colombian cooking, which I've discovered. They have incredibly fresh produce. There are literally cows everywhere. I did find a lot of their food incredibly simple, delicious, but very, very, very simple. And so again, I apologize to all of my Colombian friends if I am butchering and offending or ruining this for you gigantic slab of meat look at that that's massive goodness gracious all right i'm just gonna cut that into three different pieces it says that we're gonna cook this in water salt and pepper however that to me uh, defies my very core being of like packing flavor as much as possible and layers of flavor into my food. So I will be cooking it in broth. I'm going to basically lay the steak into the pan and it says we need nine cups of water. So I am going to be using some of my homemade broth uh, just because I want this to be as full of flavor as possible. By the way, I should add the disclaimer that nothing in this video is going to be truly authentic. <laughs> so you're just going to have to pardon me. All right, so a little bit of salt and we're doing pepper as well. So lid on and that's basically going to do its thing for about an hour and 15 minutes. We are going to start on the petacones. We have green plantains. So these have been frozen for about six for $15. I don't really know why they don't grow plantains here in Australia. Maybe we're just not tropical enough. Who knows? Okay, so we have our plantains here. Now, apparently, uh, we slice them. I've seen different videos of this. So apparently we cut them this way. I kind of ruined that a little bit by cutting it on an angle. So sorry. Thank you, TikTok, for showing me how it's done. Then I'm going to pop that into this little basket here because we're going to put it into the air fryer. In this bowl, I'm actually going to make like a garlic butter that I can pour over the plantains so it can have as much flavor as possible. So I am gonna use fresh garlic for this. I'm gonna pop this into the microwave to melt the butter. Alrighty, we have the plantains and we have the garlic butter and I am just going to drizzle that over that. Oh my gosh, guys, that smells incredible i'm gonna air fry that for probably like 10 minutes just so i can like get the plantain really nice and soft Alrighty, while that's air frying in the background i am going to prep the next step which is hogao which is kind of like a tomato onion salsa but apparently you cook it down we're gonna start off with chopped tomatoes So I am just heating up the oil in the pan. Oil is heated. Plan 
plantains have finished air frying. And then I just take one. And then it says flatten it with a plate. So. Oh. <laughs> Well, she's not that pretty. Maybe I can just like reshape her with my hands. Um, hopefully the next ones work a little bit better. Maybe it's just a bit too dry. I don't know if the air fryer dried them out a little bit too much. That's what I get for trying to be healthy. But I have seen people do this as well. kind of worked. Okay, we had them all flattened. Uh, some of them definitely were a massive fail, uh, but others not too bad. They actually still remained cohesive in their discs. I am going to pop them back into our little air fryer baskets. Now I'm just going to brush the tops with more melted butter. <laughs> back into the air fryer and we're gonna fry those up. Alrighty my friends, it is 12. 41 and I am proper starving at this point in time. So I've got the hogao that has finished cooking So now I am going to put one cup of the beef juice In there as well as all of our shredded beef The end is near guys. I can feel it. I <laughs> cannot wait Cook for six to eight minutes. Okay, that's not bad. All right, I could do that. I could wait another six minutes. The patacones are still in the air fryer anyway, so I have to wait regardless, but six minutes. We're, we're so close, we're so close. Finally, it's plate in time, people. So we've got our patacones out of the air fryer. Lay that down. So here's the thing, I forgot to buy avocado. I know, it's like the staple in Colombian food. They have avocado with most everything. They have avocado with their soup. I have only just realized my error, so unfortunately I do not have any avocado to pour onto this. So I will be using my creamy dill sauce that I made in my last video. I'm very sorry, this is not authentic at all, but I definitely need some sort of cold creamy element. Gosh, this looks incredible. Unfortunately, there are no, there's not very many vegetables in this dish. I suppose that's fine. Now I'm going to top that with the creamy dill sauce. And I actually have some coriander that I'm gonna pop on top. Just like that. And voila. <laughs> Lunch is finally served. <sighs> Y'all have no idea how hungry I am right now. I had breakfast at like 5.30 a.m. And it's now one o'clock. Oh dang. The beef is amazing. All right. I like the crunch. They are very messy to eat though. Fortunately, my husband is at work right now, but don't worry, I will be saving him this. This will be his lunch tomorrow. Don't you worry, guys. Post lunch, caffeine hit. Yes, we have Juan Valdez again. Like I said, it's 24 hours of eating only Colombian food, so. Uh, I did put a tiny little bit of maple syrup in here just to sweeten it up, so. Anyways, I'm just gonna like chill out for a little bit until I have to make dinner. 
Oh, um, we're also making dessert. So, yeah, I'm just gonna go like sit down. <laughs> okay, we are prepping for dinner now. I'm gonna get that done nice and early so I'm not like hangry cooking, you know? So anyways, I'm gonna grab our chicken drumsticks. We are basically going to do like a chicken stew kind of vibe. All right, so again, starting off with a base of tomatoes and onions. These Colombians, I'm telling ya, may not love their vegetables, but they sure do love their tomatoes and onions. Um, and it says slice them, but because it's like a stew, I'm just gonna do like a little dice kind of vibe. Alrighty, apparently we put them in the water to stop them from browning because we're adding them to a stew later. I'm going to pop in our chicken. And let's salt them up. Apparently, we take our chicken and set it aside once it's been browned. Set that aside. And then into the pan, we're going to add the tomatoes and onions. That's tomato paste. Okay, now we're gonna add in all the spices. I'm gonna start with cumin. That was about one. And then this little guy right here. But my husband said that this is very authentic and he remembers buying this for his mama all the time. So gonna add in a bit of that. It's basically like an all-purpose seasoning. It's got a mix of dried cumin, turmeric, garlic, pepper, etc. And we're just gonna cook that on low for about 15 minutes until the onions are translucent. Wait. So some recipes call for just plain water. Others do say you can do chicken broth. So of course I'm gonna add chicken broth because hello, it's a labor. And this is the really interesting bit. You need to add vinegar. It asks for a quarter cup of distilled white vinegar so probably not that authentic but i feel like this dish needs a little bit more vegetables so i'm gonna add in some carrots all right so it's been about 20 minutes so i'm gonna add in the potatoes we're gonna cook that for an additional 15 minutes until the potatoes are tender Okay, moving on to the last and final recipe, uh, which is the dessert. There's like thousands of Colombian desserts, but when I asked my husband which one he remembers and which one like was his favorite, he mentioned this one, which is called aborajados. Aborajados? <laughs> Again, I'm so sorry for the pronunciation. Basically, it's like a plantain fritter stuffed with cheese and guava. It's a very similar concept to the patagones. Some more clean wrap. This time we are using ripe plantain. So apparently these are pre-fried because these are already fried. I don't need to do the first step of air frying them. I can just go ahead and get straight into flattening them. So that does save me a step, thankfully. Colombians sure do love flattening and deep frying things. Okay, so we have our flattened plantain, right? And uh, I know this is not traditional cheese. I wanted to use mozzarella, but I saw this and I was like, you know what? I feel like that would be cute. So now we're using this big old block here. This is literally like guava paste. Yeah, guava paste. Very sugary, I will tell you that. 
paste first, like that, and then the cheese. And then this is how I saw them do it. Okay, well, that is like one fritter. Set that aside and we're gonna keep on going. Now I'm gonna be making the batter for this. By the way, you'll notice that I changed my jumper because I absolutely trashed my other jumper. <laughs> Um, so yeah, hence the quick little outfit change. Four tablespoons of flour. I actually don't have flour, so I am going to be substituting with oats, and I'm gonna blend that up and make an oat flour. So hopefully it will still work the same and uh, make it a little bit more, you know, just nutritious. Alrighty, we have our blitzed up oat flour. One. Two. two tablespoons of milk. I'm substituting with oat milk. I'm gonna whisk that out. And two tablespoons of sugar. I'm gonna be substituting maple syrup. Okay, so essentially, we want to take the fritter Dip it into the batter, and then we're going to use our good friend, the air fryer, once more. And now we are just going to air fry that. Mmm! Oh, that's good! Alrighty guys, it is time to finally plate up dinner. So, um, traditionally this is served over rice or you can have it with arepas, but I've already got pre-made rice. And this is the little frozen rice hack that I always showcase in my meal prep videos. So make sure that you watch those if you haven't. I'm just gonna pop one in each. And my husband saved the day. He actually brought home an avocado because I believe they typically serve this with avocado on the side. Like I said, they have avocado with most everything. What a beautiful, beautiful avocado. I could honestly not do a full day of eating Colombian food video without having avocado in something. You know, like that's just not it. I feel like that would just not be authentic. And voila, dinner is served. So we cannot have Colombian dinner without some Colombian drinks. So we have a hot soup for me and a pony malta for my husband. Because apparently that's his favorite. That's your favorite, right? Yeah, he's for champions. For champions? Yeah. Are you a champion? Actitud de campeones. So when we were in Colombia, this was literally everywhere. And uh, this is honestly amazing. It's called Hatsu tea, yuzu, and manzanilla. 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 This is boni malta. <laughs> it's like a malted, I don't know, it's like a malted drink, but it's non-alcoholic. No, no. And it just, it kind of reminds me a little bit of this Chinese venison that I had growing up, but that's okay. It's still a little bit tasty. We got our dinner, we have our drink. Disfrute la comida. Disfrute la comida. Okay, the, they're done. And they're looking a little bit crazy. Let's test one out, shall we? I mean, the cheese isn't very melty. We're gonna plate them up. 
Okay, so in terms of presentation, these, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, these don't look the best, but maybe it's a case of like, ugly delicious? Alrighty, that concludes today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I personally absolutely love today. I did find it quite exhausting, only just because I never cook with recipes. Trying to follow a recipe, trying to make sure that it is as authentic as possible uh, was a bit of a challenge. <laughs> I actually wanna kind of make this into a bit of a series because the truth is, is that I can only cook from my own personal experience. And I know that there is a whole universe of amazing food out there, different cultures, different spices, different flavors, different techniques. And I want to be able to learn as much as I can because I want to be able to kind of expand my repertoire and my knowledge because I feel like the more that you immerse yourself in other cultures and other, and like learn about their food, the more that it helps you have a lot more diversity, a lot more range in your meals. So comment down below which country you reckon I should do next. A better way to appreciate another culture and actually get educated about another culture than eating what they eat and learning about their food, you know? That is basically all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I hope that this was entertaining and uh, maybe inspirational for you. I honestly feel like I will be incorporating that into my meal preps more often because it is just so simple, it's so easy and it's honestly so tasty. I already have arepas most days with my husband and uh, again, let me know which country should I do next? Alright, catch you all later. Bye!